What's up guys, Coffee Time here with Live Squares, your favorite chess YouTuber. And so this is a little series I want to start where we keep things casual, do less technical things. And maybe in the next episode, let's actually put some coffee in this mug. And so the question I have for you today is, are you underrated at Blitz or any other time format for that matter? Of course, we'd like to think we are. We do our tactics puzzles the whole time. We analyze our games. And before we go to sleep at night, we are reading endgame manuals like Duretsky. So as you look at this graph that I compiled last year where I went through 50 randomly selected chess.com profiles, I wrote down their blitz rating, the x-axis, and their average game accuracy y-axis found on their profile page. The blue dots represent the profiles. And I use a spreadsheet tool to basically put a line of best fit through it. So for all you mathematics lovers out there, a logarithmic best fit line. And surprise, surprise, you see what you'd expect to see, which is that if you play chess more accurately, you can expect to have a higher blitz rating. And so, on the one hand, you'd be like, whoa, 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 what's this? This isn't insightful, life squares. This is just a fancy way of telling me something that I already know. And that's true. But the bar is set so low in chess YouTube content that if you skip this video, you're just going to watch a rerun of someone's Twitch stream, which, let's face it, is like plastic pollution in the ocean of YouTube content. On the other hand, you could use this graph to see whether you're underrated at chess. So you could go to your chess.com profile, look at your Blitz page, look up your average game accuracy, and use this graph to see where others are at in terms of their rating. So as an illustration, here's my chess.com profile. Don't judge, guys. I've only been playing two, two and a half years. And what you can see here is that I have a rating of 1300, high of 1336, played some 2000 Blitz games. And it's telling me here that my average game accuracy is 70.9%, so close to 71%, 815 games analyzed. But now, if we go back to that graph, look up the y-axis, look at the number 70, move across to see where it meets the line, then you can see that others with this type of game accuracy have around a blitz rating of 1,500. Now, you could take this analysis a little bit further, right? You could make yourself feel a little bit better. You could look at, say, the last one year, and you can see here that I've played 400 games. And here, my average game accuracy has actually improved. It's 77.7%. And if I go back to that graph, you can see that if I look along the y-axis between 75 and 80, it's telling me that my chess.com blitz rating could be closer to 2,000. Now, there is one catch here. I don't really believe that I would have a 2,000 strength on chess.com. There is entirely possible to have a high accuracy score, but a low blitz rating. How could that be achieved? Well, if you just lose on time. So you're just burning time trying to find good moves, but then your clock runs out, and of course you lose the game. And this is a problem that I have had. And so if I go into my profile page again and look at, say, my all-time stats, I go into the middle, you see this woeful stat here where it's telling me that I'm losing losses by timeout, excuse me, of 54.4%, which is just totally unacceptable. I should be moving quicker. When I'm losing, I should be resigning or getting checkmated. If I have a look at, say, the last one year, it's actually improved, right? So losses by timeout has now fallen to 44.5%. But obviously, that is still very high. Okay, so let's say you're not like me. You don't lose a lot of games by timeout. Very good. And you look at a graph like this, and you just get the feeling that you're really underrated. Well, what are you going to do about it? And so before I talk about that, I just want to caveat this by saying there are only 50 to 100 data points here. If anyone fancies a tech project out there, maybe scrape thousands of accounts, put a more accurate graph together. I might make a video about it and, of course, give you full credit. And so the first thing to think about here is that maybe you just don't play enough. And so you can think about this in a kind of mathematical way. And so if you have, say, a probability of winning of 51% at your level, you're a little bit underrated, then after 100 blitz games, you're going to win, you're expected to win 51, lose 49, let's keep draws out of it, keep the math simple. Then all you're going to gain with, say, an average point gain loss of 7 points is 14 points. How is that? You have 51 times 7 minus 49 times 7, which just simplifies to 2 times 7, 14 points. That's all you're going to get after 100 blitz games. Now, you might say something like, oh, actually, my probability of winning 60%, I'm very underrated. But even then, 60 minus 40, 20, 20 times 7, 140 points gained, which is not a lot. And so you get the feeling when you look at maths like this that you are going to have to rack up thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of blitz games to actually get to the level you want to be at. And I guess this is why people refer to it as the grind. So the second thing you might want to think about when assessing your rating level, whether you're underrated, is this video that I watched from international master Kostya Gavitsky. Big shout out to him. He posted this three years ago. It's still a great video. Go watch it. Link in the description be below. Give it a thumbs up. Where he's basically talking about the difference between chess knowledge and chess skill. Chess knowledge being your understanding of openings, theoretical endgames, and skill being your intuition, your decision making, and how both things are important. 
And it was really eye-opening for me because it kind of made me understand that in my first few years of playing chess, I just spent way too much time acquiring chess knowledge. And that really, I needed to sharpen my skills. I needed to play more, analyze my games and build the neural net in my head when it comes to dealing with chess positions. So there might be many people like this. And so I'm going to show you this amusing position from the Lee Chess platform, where after e4, e5, bishop, c4, knight, f6, all normal stuff. There are some 700,000 people in the Lee Chess database that play bishop takes f7. This doesn't even have a name. And now if the king takes f7, black is completely winning. It's about minus five, minus six on the engine. What's absolutely fascinating about this, and don't act like you don't do stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen you in my games. Is that if you open up my favorite thing in the world, the Lee Chess database, you can see here that this position has been reached 700,000 times. And it's just ridiculous that white has won 52%. White is completely losing, but white won 52%. And you'll say something like, well, isn't this just a bunch of bullet games, people flagging? Okay, let's remove the bullet games from the filters. You can see the position has been reached 400,000 times, white 149%, still more than black. And you say, okay, but maybe it's just a bunch of kids, babies playing. Okay, let's remove the lower rated players. Fine, leave 1800s and above. And you look at this and still white is winning 45% of games. Black is clearly winning more with 51%. But guys, black is completely winning. You'd expect this to be much more imbalanced. Okay, so are you underrated? Well, you might be. In my case, I got the feeling that instead of being 1300 blitz, I could be 1500. I needed to play a lot more games to kind of get there. And also, I had focused a lot of time on acquiring chess knowledge and needed to just sharpen my skills. You might have the inverse problem. You might play a lot, have very sharp skills, be very good in middle game situations at coming up with moves, but just quite frankly have kind of woeful understanding of openings and end games. And so you need to acquire more knowledge. Thank you very much for your time.